let's flip forgotten thrift store finds into stunning home decor. We're gonna dive right into the aisles of my thrift store. I'm going to pick several items and reimagine those forgotten gems into one-of-a-kind pieces. I found this interesting looking vase at the thrift store. Uh, the size is fantastic. I love the detail on it. The color, however, is a little reptilian. It's got scales all over it. The green tone isn't the prettiest. But for the low price of $4.99, I knew we had nothing to lose. So this first flip is actually going to be a dupe. I was on the Paragold website and I came across this jar. It had these stunning gold branches on it. I was so inspired by it. Now I know that this jar does not mimic our vase, but we are going to take inspiration from this Paragold jar. Now, the one thing I did not like about it was the price. It is on sale right now, but it's still at a steep cost of $162. And I know that we can get something very similar for much, much less. Now we need a lid to our vase to create a jar. So I went to Hobby Lobby and they had some wood rounds. They have a whole bunch of sizes there of these wood rounds and I love the detail on them and they're always so affordable. So I picked up one of those. The edges on this wood round were a little rough, so I took some fine grit sandpaper and sanded down all of the edges until it was nice and smooth. So now I have my two pieces. I'm gonna take them outside and I'm going to spray them in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I sprayed the wood round first. I made sure that it was completely coated in the white spray paint, and then I moved on to our reptilian vase. We got rid of the scales by painting it completely in the white spray paint. Once both pieces had been completely covered in the paint, I let it dry for one hour. I'm going to create my gold branches on my Cricut Maker with some gold permanent vinyl. I had my Cricut Maker cut out these branches. I weeded away the excess vinyl. Then I got a large piece of transfer tape, put it over the top of the vinyl branches, pressed it firmly to the vinyl, then I got a pair of scissors because I'm going to cut out each one of these branches individually. So once they had been cut, I removed the backing and then I placed them on my jar. One thing that I've learned over time is that if you're putting vinyl on a curved surface, if you make little slits along the side, the vinyl will lay flatter. So that's what I did. I cut the transfer tape so that the vinyl could lay flat on our vase. Once my first cherry blossom was where I wanted it to be, I pressed it firmly to the vase with my scraper tool and then I removed the transfer tape. I rotated the vase and then got the second cherry blossom branch and put it on the opposite side. I did the exact same thing. I pressed the vinyl to the vase and then removed the transfer tape. With my third vinyl branch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half because I wanna take both of these pieces and add them to the cherry branches that are already on the vase because I want to fill in that vacant space that is between the two large branches. By simply adding these gold branches to this vase, it looks brand new. So now let's move on to the lid. What I'm gonna do with our lid is put a knob in the center. Now, the knob that I'm going to be using is actually a, a knob that we used in a previous project. We did a high-end duped box and I used this marble knob with a gold trim. I purchased this set at Ross and so I had some leftover, which I love. I love using things that I already have because I know it's not gonna cost me any extra money. So I got my drill and I marked a dot with a pencil in the center of the wood round I actually put the lid on top of a spray paint lid because when I drill through the wood, it will go into the vacant space in the lid and not drill into my marble tray below. Now that my hole has been drilled in the center, I can add some more gold vinyl branches to the lid. So I just simply pressed one final branch on the top of the lid. I had the branch cascade down the side and then I tucked the excess underneath the lid and then pressed the leaves on the details on the side. Mm -hmm. 
Now that the vinyl is in place on the lid, I can get my marble knob and place it in the center. I put the washer and the nut on the back to hold it firmly into place. And now I can simply take that lid and put it right on top of my vase. You guys, how beautiful is this vase slash jar? I cannot believe how beautiful this is. The lid is stunning. The branches are gorgeous. The fresh coat of white paint makes this vase look so expensive and high end. This jar has definitely come a long way from when we found it at the thrift store. And it looks so similar to our inspiration piece. The branches are almost identical. I love the gold and the white combination together. Ours is not the exact same size or shape, but if I add up all the costs that went into creating my jar slash vase, it only cost $14.24, which is a great deal. That's a huge savings, and considering where this vase came from, it looks 100% different. And of course, you can take the lid off of this and use it as a vase. So it's multifunctional. You can get dual purposes out of this decor piece. We definitely flipped this thrift store find into a show-stopping piece of home decor. Sometimes I am astounded at the things that I find in my thrift store. Take for instance, these candlesticks. I found them on the floor, they were in the corner, they were super dusty and dirty, but I knew they had potential. These candlesticks are originally from the Bombay Company. They are tall, they are very heavy. The price on these candlesticks was an absolute steal. The tall one was $6.99 and the medium size was $4.99. I mean, it was a no-brainer to scoop these up. Now the first thing that we need to do is clean them up. They are so dirty. The silver on it was really cloudy and slightly oxidized and the paint had been chipped on the candlestick. So what we're gonna do is get some Wright's Silver Cream and we're going to try it really hard to bring this silver back to its original state. I love using the Wright's Silver Cream, I use it on all of my silver pieces and it shines it right up. Now I had to put a whole lot of elbow grease into cleaning these candlesticks. But after a whole lot of scrubbing, they finally started to sparkle and shine. I cleaned up the medium sized one first and I'm going to set it side by side to the one that hasn't been cleaned yet and you can see the massive difference between the shine. I was astounded at what a little bit of elbow grease can do. It made all the difference in the world. So I repeated this exact same process on the second candlestick. I got that right silver cream and I shined it right up. The black paint was chipped and so we need to address that next. We don't want to mess with our beautiful silver that we just cleaned up. So I'm gonna get some blue painter's tape and I'm gonna tape off all of the silver on these candlesticks. Once the silver was protected, I took my candlesticks outside and I sprayed the exposed portion in some white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. I made sure that the black paint was covered up in the white paint. I went around both of the candlesticks, making sure that it was 100% coated in this paint. Once it was covered, I let it dry for one hour. Now I can remove the blue painter's tape to reveal a lighter, brighter, freshened up candlestick. Now there was one problem and that's a user error on my part. The little decorative acanthus wreaths at the bottom, I didn't tape those up super good. They were really hard to tape, so you can see some white that got onto the sides of these acanthus wreaths. So what I'm going to do to remedy that is get some gold rub and buff and a paintbrush and I went over the edges of these raised details. I painted over the top and the sides. Once I was finished painting the rub and buff on, I got a tissue and I wiped off the excess. I continued to paint the gold rub and buff on all four sides of both of my candlesticks. The gold rub and buff masked that white paint beautifully and I actually love the two-tone of the silver and the gold together. 
It adds another color detail to these candlesticks, but it still coordinates together so nicely. And now we are finished with our candlesticks. You guys, these are beautiful. I cannot believe how stunning they turned out. And if you didn't want to use these as candlesticks, you could use them as weights because they are so heavy. These are so sturdy, durable, and now they are beautiful. I can use these all year long in so many different designs and so many different seasons. I just need to add a candle to the top. And now I have a beautiful piece of home decor. Whenever I see trays in my thrift store, I scoop them up. Trays are one of those versatile items that you can use in so many different ways. I found this square tray and it was only $2.99, which is an amazing price. Now this tray is far from perfect. It had some scratches on the bottom and then there was also a large gap in between the two tones of wood. So there are a couple things that need to be addressed. We're gonna start off by fixing that large gap. I got some wood filler and I pressed it in between the gap. There was actually a few different gaps along the bottom of the tray. So I filled those in and then I let the wood filler dry for 12 hours. Once it was dry, I could sand it down smooth. Once the wood filler and the scratches had been smoothed out, I simply wiped it clean with a damp towel. I wanted to add an additional detail to the top of the tray. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I went over to the ribbon section and I found a spool of wood beads. I purchased those and what we're going to do is we're going to add these beads to the top rim of the tray. To adhere them to the tray, I got some E6000. I put that down on the top first and then I went over it with some hot glue. Then I took my strand of beads and I placed it in the glue. The E6000 will hold the beads in place long term, but while we're waiting for the E6000 to dry, the hot glue will keep it in place. Once my first line of beads had been put in place, I snipped off the end and then I did the exact same thing to the remaining three sides of the tray. I got that E6000, I put it along the rim, and then went over it with the hot glue, and then put the beads into the glue. Once all the beads had been placed on the rim of the tray, I let it dry overnight. Because we have such a variety of different kinds and colors of wood on this tray, we are going to make it cohesive and paint it in a white gloss Rust-Oleum spray paint. You guys know I love white paint and I think it makes everything just look fresh and bright. So once my tray and the beads had been completely coated in this white spray paint, I let it dry for an hour, then I flipped it over and did the opposite side. I wanted to add some feet to my tray. So while I was at Hobby Lobby, I went down the knob and pull aisle and I found these beautiful marble knobs that had a gold detail on it. And they were on sale too, which is always a great thing. While I was in process of adding these marble knobs to the bottom of the tray, I tried to remove the screw and guess what? <laughs> the screw had been drilled in to the marble. So there was no way it was coming out. So after 15 seconds of panic, I came up with plan B. And luckily I had some leftover doll heads. These are wood doll heads that I purchased at Michael's. And these are going to be our brand new feet. So I'm going to paint them. I took them outside and I sprayed them in some gold Rust-Oleum spray paint. Once these wood rounds had been completely coated in the gold spray paint, I let it dry for one hour. I flipped my tray over, I got some E6000 and I put it on the wood rounds and then placed it on all four corners of the bottom of my wood tray. Once they were in place, I let this dry overnight. Now these gold feet ended up to be a happy accident because the wood rounds match our wood rounded beads. So they coordinate. 
So I guess the moral of the story is if things don't work out in the first place, maybe there's a reason or maybe there's something better that you need to use. I love the way that this $2.99 thrifted tray turned out. The beads at the top are so beautiful and I do love the feet. I'm going to layer a few items into the center of this tray. I'm gonna start with a plate. To the center of the plate, I'm going to put a mirrored tray and then I'm going to add a beautiful jar with a candle inside. You can put decorative items in here so easily. You could also do a really shallow floral arrangement, which would be so pretty. So in the end, this tray ended up to be a top notch flip. There are rare occasions when I come across items at my thrift store and I know I have found a gem and I don't wanna do anything to it. For instance, this stunning tray. This glass tray is so beautiful. The details are simply remarkable. I love the muted pastel colors. The green and light pink give it an understated elegance. And I was blown away at the price. It was only $2.99. That is an absolute steal. And all I had to do was clean it up with some soap and water. I can use this tray in a variety of different ways. I can have it face up where the cut glass is at the top, or I can flip it over so that the smooth side is facing up. This is what I'm going to be doing right now. With the smooth side facing up, I can add some tasty food to the top. And then you can put a cloche over the top to make it look even fancier. Now I plan on keeping this, but a lot of the trays that I see at my thrift store, I use as gifts. If you gave this to one of your friends, they would never know that you purchased this for $2.99 at your thrift store. So not only are you getting a beautiful piece, but you are reusing and recycling someone else's trash, which I absolutely love. Between the thrift flips, the dupes, and the found treasures, I hope that you can see that you can live beautifully and you can do it on a budget. Hopefully these pieces inspired you today to find some items that you don't use anymore or go to the thrift store or just reimagine something that you already have. If you liked this video and want to see more like it, I would love to have you subscribe so I can share those with you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.